Hi, everybody. How you doing? Hey, how are you doing? It's great to see you. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. We have 25 people in already. Please let us know where you're tuning in from. Sorry, we're having so much fun with this product that it, it was really hard to understand, like, uh, what was... Um, what we're going to do. We're having so much fun preparing it. So you caught us a little off guard because we're just having fun with all the playing of this. We're talking with the MS macro repro. So tell us where you're tuning in from. We're really excited to hear that. Um, yeah. And that's that. Martin, say something. I think I just lost my sound for a second. <laughs> oh, well, I'm good. I'm good. Hello, hello everyone. Hello from Memmingen. Okay. Uh, Matt already yeah. said it all. Let us know where, where you are tuning in from. Um, we're here live at the Novaflex studio in Memmingen, and um, Matt is standing at the Novaflex studio US in Catskill, right? That's right. I seem to be outfitted rather well today, so yeah. <laughs> exactly. We're multicamming this whole thing again for you. Yeah. So you, we will show you the system from uh, different angles. We will give you a view right through the camera so you can see what I can see or what Matt is seeing right through the viewfinder of his camera. Yeah. yeah. Martin, I got to say, when you first told me about the MS Macro Repro, I was so stoked. I mean, just your descript description of it and the problems it solves got me excited. And then we made the video and I was even more right. excited. That so, was a lot um, of fun, actually. It really was. Yeah. yeah. If you guys didn't know, it's not obvious. We don't tell people Martin came to the States and we all made the Martin, Brendan and I made the video together. So. It was a lot of fun dreaming it up and making it happen. So we hope you guys got to watch it. If not, we'll play it for you at the end of the webinar. Uh, uh, but not until then. We're doing all this live. So hello from Armenia, San Diego, San Mateo, California, Nascau, Denmark. That's very, Ooh. Jens, what an hot day. Uh, we have South Carolina. We have Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. Matt from New Jersey. All right, nice. Oh, that's Matt, Lucia. Matt, Hi, Lucia. And Matt, Gino. didn't you tell me that you speak a little Danish? Yeah, and lit. This tema, yeah. Uh, and we have Calgary, Alberta. We really have an international crowd today and Eastern Long Island. It's wonderful to see somebody from Denmark here because my Danish is terrible, but uh, I really miss speaking it. So, all right, well, and Christina Young from upstate New York. All right, upstate New York power. Love it. All right. So, um, yeah, today we've got a whole bunch of ground to cover and we're going to have a lot of fun showing you how these things work together, how the system works. So um, please, at any time, drop your questions in there because Q&A is what this is for. There's only one reason to do this live instead of making a video. It's you. We want you to ask us questions and we'll answer it and show you stuff. So please ask questions to them in the chat or you'll see Q&A. If we think a chat question should be Q&A, we'll upgrade it to Q&A. So if you see your chat disappear, it just got moved to Q&A. No big deal. Um, yeah. Hey, so Matt, let's, how, yeah. Should we, should we do a Q&A session right after the demonstration part of this uh, webinar? Or do you want to jump to several questions right in between? I think we should do a Q&A, but let's see how many questions we get. Sound good? Awesome. Cool. All right. Sounds good to me. So, all right. So we are here to talk about six essential ways to use the new modular macro repro system. We have a deck that we're going to use to just sort of walk through these things and switch back to showing stuff live. So um, we're going to share real results and how we achieve them for these configurations. A mini studio doing focus stacking. And I'll, I'm first up, I'm going to show you that. And then how to use a natural backdrop for your images, which is really fascinating. Uh, and Martin's that. And then I'm going to show you some film and slide digitizing. And then back to Martin, he's going to show you a copy stand with a backlit subject. And then back to me, I'm going to show you a copy stand, or one of us is going to show a copy stand with wrinkled creased documents against Martin again. And then we're going to show you how to take part of this and use it as a copy stand on a tripod for large maps and posters. This one system does it all, and it's pretty amazing. So moving on to the next slide, let's talk about what the components are of the MS Macro Repro. Well, we've numbered them here in the screen for you so you can see what they are. The first one is the MS-30 sweep table or infinity cove. It has a beaded chain, as Martin is showing, he's holding it up, and you can bend it to a curve that is correct for you. Uh, number two is the, the heart of the system, the base holder, 
and that comes with a translucent plexiglass plate. I have it here. Uh, and that Martin is holding up there. Uh, and what attaches to that is item number three, which is a 25.6 inch or 65 centimeter long column or rail. And that has a sliding block on it with a quick release plate, a uh, quick release mount on it. Um, and that is the other part of the heart of the system. Let's call it the backbone, right? And then number four is a steel ground plate with magnetic strips and a 12 by 12 inch line white grid on it. So you can align things accurately and square, right? Uh, number five is the negative or slide duplicator for film sizes up to six by six centimeters, the MS Film Cup, KOP. Uh, and then number six, we have the, the distance holder. Uh, that is, uh, you can mount the quick release block directly onto the sliding block, or you can have these spacers to move it further away, depending on the height of your object or the distance away from the center of the column. And then number exactly. seven. And there's, yeah. there's actually two of these distance holders, so you can use either one of the two or combine them. So you stack them together. To and a nice, a nice thing, uh, we'll show you this. They have a, a square on them, so nothing ever spins on them. They fit into each other. The machining on this is absolutely incredible. Uh, when you experience it, you're like, oh, that was really thoughtful. Of course, it's NovaFlex. What can I say? I love you guys. Um, and number seven, they have the lighting kit with two lighting banks, these LED adjustable lighting LED arms, which Martin has on his right there. So these are the components of the full set. And we'll talk about what that is, but let's walk through what it is, what these, what you can do with it first. And then we'll talk about which kits might be good for you. So the first one is the mini studio. In this configuration, we're gonna talk about doing focus stacking with that. So uh, let's do this. Um, I have it right here in front of me. And you might see a couple of things in front like I have a GoPro and that's for my second view. So you can see it here. I look squishy, but this looks great, right? So this whole thing from here to here is uh, the MS Mac Pro Repro kit in its mini studio configuration. And you see, here's the long arm here, and I'm just gonna show you how this works. You can loosen it up and slide this back and forth, right? And I have on top of this mounted my camera with a focusing rail. So I'm just gonna slide that in right there. And then over here, you have the mini sweep over here with the beaded chain where you can adjust where it is. And of course, I'm moving things around but you have these little clips that hold it to the translucent white base also. So now I've just put that there and I can show you what it looks like through the camera. And now we've got an object and this is kind of what I set up the other day. But what I can do is I can move the camera back and forth until I achieve the right focus here. And I can increase my exposure to be correct. And now we're starting to see something in there and I can sort of zoom in. And now once I have this set, now I can start to use the focusing rail here. Uh, and I'm finding the right, ah, there we go. So now I can move the focusing rail in and out here while I've got my focus there and I can zoom in. And I just did this the other day. I can go find the front end of his nose there and say, that's where I'm gonna start. Isn't that amazing? And oh, there's the beginning of my focus, right? Then I'm gonna to go to the back end here. I'm gonna find where the back end is. I'm gonna go find that it's zoomed in. And I know I'm gonna stop there. And all of that is me just doing this is moving this back and forth. And I would do this the number of times that I need to do it uh, through calculations saying like, okay, if that's a 30 second of an inch, that's about two millimeters, right? And I would turn this just two millimeters each time, take another picture and turn it and take another picture. And that's focus stacking. And that's done here. And you can use any lighting that you want. Um, it does come with um, wonderful LED arms. Uh, and I just wanted to do this one with colors. So I put some, uh, some color LED bars here. Uh, but the, the lights that come with it are wonderful and you can dial the power up and down. 
and they come with a, a softening ability to them also. So this whole kit right here makes it pretty easy and fun to do. And I want to show you something else that I, I like doing with it is you can loosen up on the sides here and you can change the angle of this too. So if I loosen this up and I want the angle of this to change, I can change the angle to be in whatever I want it to be. And if you have a ball head and you want to put it down on the other end, you can put a ball head down here also to have a little bit more freedom. But this is exactly the right height for what I need when I'm looking through the camera. And I have a full cove sweep back there so I can make it shadowless as much as I want to. And I think um, for all of the small objects work that I want to do, you know, like if I want to take a picture of a lens or something, I can take a picture of things that are pretty sizable on this. And it's great for e-commerce or crafts work. Uh, or even if you have uh, some artifacts that you want to shoot, you can take this portable mini studio anywhere and have a lot of fun with it. Anything you want to add to that, Martin? Well, thanks, thanks a lot, thanks a lot for the introduction, Matt. That was that was great. Um, that figure is—is is it made out of wax or what? What material is it? <laughs> this this is something I found at uh, the local local Christmas market in Koksaki, New York. This is uh, a moon candle, and the person that I bought it from said that she got the. Uh, wax mold for this from somebody in Poland. So, in Poland. Um, yeah. So it was. It's just a remarkably rich and detailed. As soon as I saw it, I said, "I'm making macro with that," and I hope that other people get to see it. But <laughs> like, just the the amount of detail in this um, a wax sculpture, I really call it. It's a candle. Who would burn this? It'd be a crime, right? It's it. Yeah, as soon as I, I made the picture, it changed from just being a candle to being something that's just like rich with character. That was a lot of fun. Well, we should we should definitely send people uh, the result, the resulting image that that you took when yeah. when using the MS Macro Repro to do focus stacking. Um, you know what? With, when I when I send out the follow up email, I'll do that. It was used, Please I think, in, to, in the marketing to attract people to come to this webinar. And thank you all for being here. Uh, and I'll send out a, a, a link so you can go look at it in full resolution. Have fun. Okay. Uh, let's jump right uh, into the next configuration. Uh, it's a configuration um, to shoot um, subjects and objects uh, with a natural backdrop. And as you can see here right next to me, uh, the configuration of the MS Macro Repro is pretty much similar to the one that Matt was using uh, for the photo shoot of his um, candle. The only thing that I removed is the sweep table. And um, I've added a little um, motorcycle to, to this setup. And um, Andreas, if you just switch the camera to, to this one here uh, using the ATEM, uh, you can see that um, I can take beautiful pictures um, of model cars, of uh, model motorcycles and use um, the natural backdrop. So in in in, in the background, um, unfortunately, yeah, okay. Um, unfortunately, here in Germany, it's um, it's already dark outside, uh, so I can't show you this with the actual natural background. So the only thing that you are seeing right now is uh, a blurred image of um, the background here um, um, at our studio, but uh, that's a a, a, a wonderful full setup for for shooting these little these little model cars and uh, and and stuff similar to that. And um, as Matt told you, um, we also offer <clears throat> um, a pair of um, of lamps, which are made by Kaiser Phototechnik here in Germany. And they are they are fifty six hundred Kelvin and have a color response of ninety five CRI. They are both dimmable, uh, as you can see here. I can um, dim them as a pair or each by itself. And um, as you can see here, also here in uh, our setup, um, I've added a little ball head in between. So I'm not only just using the spacers that Matt was referring to um, in the beginning, I'm using um, a ball head to have uh, more move, more movement capabilities here. So I can 
bring this in focus perfect and i'm using a uh, focusing rail in addition so that's uh, another setup that you can use um, the amos macro repro for um, matt if you just jump to the next slide we can show people some uh, actual some some real examples that i took over the weekend with this setup of the same motorcycle exactly and i did another one with sure. a model car um, I, I did this, uh, I think, yesterday or the day before, these images. And um, the second image was actually shot not with a real camera, but with my iPhone. So you see, you uh, can use this MS Macro Repro modular repro kit not only with uh, like your Sony, Nikon, Fuji, or Canon camera. You can also use your iPhone to create stunning, stunning images. Anything you want to add, Matt? No, I think that's great. Uh, I'm, I'm really, I think that the imagination is the key here when people exactly. are thinking about what, what they can use or not. Right. So, um, Hey, my and camera's on. So people are probably seeing me switch out to the next configuration. That's fine. <laughs> Great. So we had a question, um, from David yeah. Leibowitz. Sure. Why do you have the for this is regarding the setup that I had? Why do you have the camera mm -hmm. rail at an angle rather than parallel to the ground? Uh, that question was meant for you or for me? Uh, I think you can answer it. Um, it's it's a I I had the I had it set up with the leg the the mini the drumstick underneath the right. end. So the, the base rail was not flat. It was angled upwards, you know, so or angled downwards, actually. So that's uh, that's what he was referring to. Uh, so, uh, OK, I guess I can answer it. Um, it didn't do. matter to me. Yeah, it didn't matter to me whether it was right side up or whether it was flat or not, because I could angle the cove whichever way I wanted to. And that just felt natural. I could have. I could have used one of the four uh, small uh, feet that come with it instead of the longer one to put underneath it down mm -hmm. here like this, and it would have been level. So if you wanted to set it up that way, totally fine. It's up to you. Uh, for me, it just happened to work out great that way. So that's what I'm thinking. And I think it all always depends on... Uh the way and the angle you want to shoot a certain subject and uh, the way you, you imagine the, the final image to be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's, that's so. also the reason I've added a uh, ball head in between and not just uh, the, um, the spacers. So I have more freedom in camera position. Yep. Yeah, so this is, this is, the, this is the drumstick I was referring to. So it comes with one of these drumsticks. Normally, you can use these short legs uh, to make your NovaFlex tripod a tabletop tripod or a macro tripod or ground pod, right? Uh, these are interchangeable because NovaFlex, NovaFlex is the system, right? So uh, this one comes with it so you can shoot with it uh, at an angle or flat. But there are four of these small balls that come with it. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is this. Uh, and I hope that helped answer your question, David. Oh, he said, thanks. That makes sense. Fantastic. Great. So um, the next thing we're looking at is film and slide digitizing. So I'm going to set up for this. I'll show you. Uh, in this photograph, you can see that you can do it uh, straight up and down like a traditional uh, copy stand. Or you can, you can do it uh, uh, horizontally if you wanted to. I'm going to show you the straight up and down way. I'm going to show you a couple of ways that I would do this too. So I'm going to switch back to my camera here and show you this. So number one, it comes with, and I have a slide in there right now. I'll take it out. Uh, DMS film cup. And that is this right here. So if you are into digitizing uh, film, the MS film cup has the ability to use uh, inserts. I'm just going to take one of these inserts out. So it says up to six by six, but I've successfully photographed up to six by seven 
in this. And the, if you, there are a handful of things that come with it for you to do mounted slides or strip 35 millimeter film or six by six with this. But there's other inserts you can get from Kaiser Phototechnik that you can do that, uh, other things with. Uh, and you'll see that in the video. You also notice that this has some blades in the background that you can use to sort of crop out if you wanted to get rid of stray light while you were uh, photographing or digitizing. And also it has the ability to move these little sliders in to help you keep the film exactly where you want it to be. So this is an incredible film digitizing option. And I'm just gonna take this and put it back on here like that. This is the slide mount holder. And then you just put your slide, you drop your slide right in there. And then you can put a light box here, like the Kaiser Slim Light Plano. And you can put this right on top of it like that. And then you can see, I'll move this closer to you guys, that, that you can see that there. But there's one other thing that you'll see. Um, this has an edge that fits into uh, the holders here. So you can reconfigure this and take the translucent parts out. And this is where you start to see some more of the genius of the system. These side arms move in and out. So you can take these and have a, a film holder that never slides around on you and you never need to reconfigure, which let me know in the comments if you've ever experienced that when you're trying to digitize film, that you have a great film holder, but it keeps moving around and you have to tape it down or something. You know? um, so you could take this and lock it into place and then put your light box underneath it and then it's illuminated. So let's find our image here. And I'm turning my camera on and we'll put this in the middle. Martin, I can hear some background noise. Uh -huh. We're just gonna take this guy down here, lock those legs in, and I'm gonna need to find my focus first. So I'm using a bellows here, but you could use, of course, your macro lens it goes to one-to-one -to -one, right so that's another option um moving this over till we get the right thing get the right exposure sorry i turned the, the camera off there folks butterfingers and now we're going to move this until we get the right focus now I'm not gonna fill the frame for the sake of time, but I just wanted to show you that we've got a nice evenly lit slide there. And I have this right here. You can also stick in this. I have it resting on top right now, but you can stick it on the sides of this also. Um, and then you would open this up uh, and switch your slides out or change this, uh, change this insert to one of the other inserts for any of the film that you may have. And here's some examples right here of things that I've digitized within the last week. Uh, the first image on the left is the image that inspired me to pursue night photography for decades. It's something I shot when I was a teenager. And the one in the middle is when I was shooting a Mamiya 7 uh, and I photographed the Mermaid Parade in Coney Island. And I didn't put the format mask into my Mamiya 7 II. So I was shooting over the sprocket holes. And that's a hard image to digitize because it gets curly over that long distance. So I inserted the uh, glass, the optional glass holders into the MS film cup. And it kept it super flat. It sandwiched them between two pieces of anti-Newton glass. And I was able to make a really great digitization of that negative and i'll just add this it's really wonderful to use a raw file a dmg of a negative or a chrome instead of a scan because there's a lot more editing flexibility to it so i'm really enjoying digitizing film with a camera instead of a scanner and the third one is something i shot uh, maybe a month and a half ago uh, in acadia actually this is up at the west quality head lighthouse the easternmost point 
in the United States, that's a long exposure on my Mamiya 7.2, and that's a six by seven image. And I did what we, just what we did here. I put the piece of film in and I digitized it. So uh, if you have film that you currently shoot or older film that you want to digitize, say family archives, uh, this is an incredible way to do it efficiently and get it right into Lightroom or your editor of choice. Now I'm going to switch it back over to Martin. Uh, he's going to talk about doing a copy stand with a backlit subject. Well, thanks a lot, Matt. These were certainly great uh, digitizations that you made with, uh, with our product. And the next product I, I want to introduce is, um, let's see, is, is a backlit, uh, is photographing a backlit subject. And all we did is um, we were just tilting the uh, entire setup. So uh, it, it is not uh, horizontal anymore. It, it is now vertical. We were uh, tilting the panel holders so that the translucent base plate sits, sits flat. And we've added a, a Kaiser light box underneath to bring in some light from underneath. And um, as you can see, we've, uh, we've added some um, plexiglass samples in various colors. Um, Andreas, if you just uh, switch to the camera and now you can uh, start becoming creative. Um, but it, it's not just uh, taking photos of little plexiglass samples. There's so many more things you can uh, take photos of. Um, in one of the slides that uh, we, we have, there's um, a little rose, a little vase that you can photograph. So um, here again, it's all uh, uh, up to your imagination. And um, you can also perfectly create, um, well, um, Photoshop editing pass uh, of images that you take with um, a light coming from underneath. Um, as you can see here, there is um, a clear, uh, differentiation between the background and, and the subject. So it's um, another beautiful uh, use case for our MS uh, Macro Repro setup. Um, and we're not just using the uh, Kaiser light box coming from underneath. Um, I've also brought in some extra light from above with one of the um, uh, lights that we offer in addition to our, to our product. Um, maybe you can show the sample image that I have in, in our presentation, Matt. Yeah, that's, that's a sample image that I took uh, over the weekend, just to, to give you an idea of what's, what's possible with, with this product. Um, th the next configuration that uh, we have for our MS Macro Repro is taking photos of um, wrinkled or creased photos. And um, all we have to do is let me show you this slide. Take out this translucent base plate. And replace it with the with this steel plate that we offer. It also comes with uh, two of these magnetic strips which are scaled in both inches and centimeters. And I just bring it in here. That's it. And um, all of you, uh, I'm pretty sure, have come across uh, photos that are creased, folded, rolled, or wrinkled. And um, Hey, Martin, I'm not, I'm not seeing the right camera sorry you're not seeing the right camera yeah hold on i, I will just bring in a photo i just okay. had to there we go okay okay uh, we just uh flipped the translucent base plate for the steel base plate with the uh magnetic holders and right here i have um a creased photo just have some some gloves with me because it's a it's a glossy photo. Fits up and cup. And if I use these magnetic holders, it is pretty easy to align it with the help of the grid.
and now I can just easily. Okay, we have to adjust this a little further. Yep. Take a perfect. copy of this old photograph. So for all of you who have wondered about the, uh, the size of the column that we have in our MS Macro Repro, it is um, 65 centimeters long. And um, we've, we've created um, this length to um, enable people using a 35 millimeter uh, camera uh, with a 50 millimeter a uh, focal length lens to take um, copies um, of um, things uh, of the size a Dean A4 or a letter size. So that's that's the reason for uh, the size of the uh, uh, MS Macro Repro column. Um, if you switch to the, to the next slide, uh, there should be an example, a sample image of the photo I took. Exactly. So, Another wonderful example of what you can do with our MS Macro Repro. Matt, anything you want to add? I'm pretty sure you've used the uh, steel plate yourself. Oh, I certainly have. I've been I've been having a, a great time going through my archive and and getting those really well made prints, but uh, that I was happy and proud of making uh, and getting them digitized. So that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, it's hard to wrangle these things because, you know, moisture, the lack of moisture could really wreak havoc over time. So, But yeah. we have another configuration uh, that uh, most of you will not uh, think of when seeing a copy stand. But um, uh, given the fact that this is a modular system, we can, of course, uh, take out the column and attach it to um, a tripod to um, make copies of even uh, larger objects or subjects, maps, plans, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And Matt is going to show us this configuration. Sure. So I just wanted to show you real quick, because we haven't talked about it yet, is the block right here. I wanted to show you that you could change it. So once you unscrew it using your handy dandy NovaFlex multi-tool, you'll see that the bottom has a square and the other side has a square. Uh, so let's get the reflections on those the right way. There we go. So that they always register with each other uh, in perpendicular. So if you wanted this to to fit so that you could use your L bracket directly, you would put it in this configuration. If you wanted to fit it so that you could use a focusing rail or a forward facing uh, quick release plate, then you put it in this direction. But all I did was use the quick release from here, where this was from its uh, copy stand configuration. I loosened it up and I took this off and I brought it over here to a tripod where I took the, which I've never seen this ever from a copy stand. Um, and you loosen it up and put it on your quick release. And I'll get you guys a better view of this in a second once it's out of my hands. So I, I lock that in, and now we can sort of see back here. Um, I have a, a piece of artwork back there, but I'm just going to say that sometimes you have trouble getting to the right height. And if you just put your, your ball head to the side and you mount this up, then you can get your camera down lower or higher, depending on how big the object is that you're trying to reproduce, and get your tripod legs spread really wide and be able to photograph straight down um, and in the video, I think it's shown really well. You can see with Martin demonstrating it there, he has one leg up on a table and two legs down on the ground to get the shadows of the legs out of the way so you can light the object correctly. So it, that's probably the biggest problem here. If you're trying to light a document correctly, you're trying to get everything at that 45 degree angle, uh, but making sure that you can get something larger shot you're going to want to take your tripod, any tripod, hopefully it's a Noteflex, and, eh, you know, widen up the legs and then turn your head to the side and then put this 
in a downward facing position so that you have all this space underneath where you can shoot. So um, this one I'm not going to show through the camera because I couldn't in my studio find a way to light all of these things plus that. So I'm sorry, you're going to have to use your imagination or go check it out in the video. I hope that that helps. <laughs> yeah. So, so now the, the, the big question is now that you've seen all of these, you might be asking yourself, which is for you? Hey, hold on one thing before yeah. we um, um, walk through all the different configuration and kits that are available. I think yeah. um, we forgot uh, something important to tell people that all, that? Of, all of the rails, <clears throat> the, the base frame and um, the column is composed of all of the rails are of course ARCA compatible. Yeah. So if you need to attach further accessories such as clamps, lights, um, colored lights as Matt was using, just yeah. um, attach them with the help of uh, an extra ARCA compatible clamp, a Q mount if it's a Novaflex clamp or any other ARCA compatible uh, accessory from, from uh, different manufacturers. And yeah. it, in addition to that, the base frame uh, has a, a whole bunch of threads thread into um, flexible goosenecks and, and other accessories with qu either quarter inch or three eighths inch thread. There is a quarter inch right there, and there's a three eighths right there. That happens at these two corners on both sides. And I found when I'm using it that I clamp on here, or I screw the goosenecks into here, or I've even clamped into the column because the bottom of the column, as you can see, is is this. So if you have, oh, let me see. I just get it out of the way. If you have one of the the quick uh, the mini clamps, you can just clamp onto the bottom of this. And I found great success with, let's say my object is somewhere around here and I'm using like a 90 millimeter macro that I clamp from the bottom of this and have a gooseneck with a flashlight for macro work. And anywhere I point this, the flashlight is always the same distance away from the subject. So clamping off the end of this rail is another great option. Okay. Should we walk through the different configurations that are available sure. as a kit? Yeah, I took a peek, and it doesn't look like there's any questions. But again, anybody, you can ask questions at any time that you want. That's what we're here for. So, yep. So the first one says, if you need a copy stand to create digital copies of your non-creased documents, documents without wrinkles, right? Uh, up to a standard letter size, the kit, which is MS-Macro-Repro, that's the right one. You see Martin handle, handling it there. So it has the translucent base plate, it has the base frame, and it has the center column. Uh, so that is, if you want to just get into uh, copying documents, perfection right there. Add your own and, me, and me holding this up shows another important fact because um, it pays, uh, it packs flat. So whenever you're on the go and want to bring this with you, you see how, yep. how flat this actually is. Super portable. And I bet, I don't know, would you recommend take, yeah, you can. You can, you can uh, I'm going to show it from, from my side. You can make it pack even flatter, right, Martin? by unscrewing sure. the corners here from the corner blocks. So you can yeah. make make this all into completely just rails if you wanted to uh, it, and pack it completely flat. It is then composed of three rails, two corner connectors, uh, four of the little rubber legs and the yeah. column with a sliding block. Right, I've never ever encountered a, the ability to move uh, a copy stand around that well. So let's look at the next one. Um, if you wanted to, if you had the same, but you also had creased or folded documents, you would add the MS-REPLA, which is the magnetic steel base plate with the magnetic strips that have reference markings on them, you know, measurements. So that's also helpful for knowing what size something is. Yeah, scaled in inches and centimeters. Mm -hmm. So... And the next um, one up that we have in is if you want to copy the thing that I showed, which is uh, slides or negatives, the MS-MR-COP. Uh, that kit is dedicated to lighting that up. And I'll switch over to Martin's 
holding it up. Look at that. And um, so. very important, uh, the MS Film Cup, which is these, this uh, film and negative or slide holder. It comes with a uh, film mask for 35 millimeter film strips, as seen here, and 35 millimeter mounted slides. And if you have film sizes uh, that differ from these two, there is a uh, film mask available uh, for four and a half by six centimeters and six by six centimeters. And if you even if you happen to have even other film formats, then there is a, a whole bunch of film masks available through our good friends at Kaiser Phototechnik. That's true. And you can even grab, um, you can use the translucent uh, base plate to photograph odd sized negatives if you need to, and just throw some anti Newton glass over top of it. Like four by five inch negatives and even, even yep. larger. Yep. Mm -hmm. Our next one is the MS MR Studio. So if you want to create stunning product shops, shots, or you need a background for focus stacking work or tiny off subjects, that's another one that I demoed. We'll switch back to Martin showing that. Oops, not me, him. There we go. And of course, <laughs> um, the sweep table also can be completely flattened. So if you want to transport it, it's this flat. Yep. And use the B-chain stoppers to adjust the curvature of the sweep table. No. And remember, it's a system. So the first three kits can always be upgraded by adding a few of the tiny or the many available accessories. Or you invest into the MSMR-Pro, which is this. Everything plus the lights, right? So exactly. you get the sweep, you get the translucent, you get the steel base plate, and you get the lights in the MS Film Cop and the bendy arms for the light. And the spacers. So if you if you liked everything you saw here today, you should just definitely go for this package because then you could do everything that you saw, right? I really love the flexibility of being able to do any of these things. Uh, so this is one. Uh, all right. So it's time for some questions. We do have a comment from Bob Rose. Hey, Bob. So great to hear from you, buddy. Happy holidays. Bob, uh, tuning in from RIT, like I said, it would be nice to have a flat case with pouches to make it even easier to transport and also keep track of all the parts, as well as keeping the plexi and other optical surfaces clean. So thank you, Bob. That's great. Uh, well, thanks for the recommendation. That's uh, certainly some recommendation to consider. Uh, Jennifer O'Leary asked, when will these kits be available? Here's the good news, Jen. They're available now. They have been produced. They're made. Uh, and if you don't see them in stock at your local retailer or on nobleflexus.com, uh, then you can simply order them because they're on the way. Uh, so like I said, if it's not in stock, just put your order in and reserve yours now. All right, our next one. Oh, thanks for the, the holiday wishes, Bob. Really great to hear from you, buddy. Um, are there large anti-Newton ring glass plates that can be used to flatten paper documents that have been folded? No, there. this is not available yet. Right. I mean, it's, it's a system. And uh, for those of you who know Novaflex, um, we're known for always improving on our products. So who knows? The system will grow and expand in the future. Right. Roberta asks, does the film kit come with the light box? No, the light box is a separate separate part. This uh, we're using here a Kaiser uh, light box. Um, this this is something you could also purchase through through Mac Group, through Kaiser Kaiser Photo US, correct, yeah. Matt? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, this this one, I think we've talked about it in previous webinars. Is the ah, slim the light slim light Yeah, you can see why people love this. It is absolutely tiny. It doesn't need to be plugged in. This is a USB charger. It has its own internal battery and can run without being plugged in. Uh, so the slim light Plano is is one of the favorites of people that uh, do this kind of work. Uh, but any light box that you can rely on is great. We just happen to be very uh, pre 
We prefer Kaiser. They're good friends and they make wonderful products. All right, what else do we have? Daniel says, thank you. Oh, okay, Roberta asked, does, oh, we already asked that one. We got that one in there. So this is a good time to get in the rest of your questions, folks, if you have any. Um, let's read this one. Okay, so uh, one of our longtime visitors here, and I know you've told me how to say your name before, and I apologize if I botch it, uh, Dr. Haru Terelian. Uh, to all those who are in extreme macro or microscopic shots, examples, insects, salt, greens, etc., this is a wonderful, if not the best, set. I use it for a long time and very, very highly recommend it. Thank you so much, doctor. We appreciate that. Thank you, Arud. Uh, appreciate that. So um, appreciate everybody coming here uh, and, you know, you can ask your questions anytime. If you're watching this on a replay, just drop your questions on YouTube and we will reply to them. Or you can reach out to NovaFlex in the US or uh, in the country where you live at the email on the respective websites and we'll get back to you. Any other questions from anybody? We have a comment from Roger. I've been using my Nikon Z9 and the new Nikon 105 millimeter macro lens to copy 35 millimeter slides. How do I get to compare the new flat field lens resolution to my existing setup. Uh, Do you understand the question? You want to answer, Matt, or? Well, I have not shot the 105, 105 millimeter macro lens. Uh, and off the top of my head, I don't know if it's apochromatic, but I do know that the Schneider lens is apochromatic. So um, I can't comment directly on that one. I can comment on the, the one that I do use. And I know that, that this one is an absolute flat field and the colors don't separate. So and Martin, if you, you want to anything? know more about flat field lenses, uh, make sure to check out the, um, the little video that Matt did on flat field lenses a couple of months back. Yeah. It is a whole presentation you know, on the 90 millimeter Schneider, especially. Yeah. I, I would say that's probably a good, uh, question to rent through. That makes sense. Um, you know, rent this setup, you know, if you, and compare it to the one that you have, uh, perhaps I'll get my hands on 105 millimeter macro and I'll be able to test it and I can send you a note because I see you, you sent us a note here. So I have, I have a way to, to reach out to you, Roger. Thank you for asking that question. Um, all right. So I think we're going to bring it in for a landing. Um, thank you everybody for attending. Thank you for registering. Uh, if you're catching this on the replay, we appreciate you for registering. If you're seeing this for the first time on YouTube, thank you so much. Consider subscribing for more great content in the future. And there's some new other exciting products coming up. We're going to release some new webinars in the coming months to support those new products. Martin, are we allowed to hint at those or should we keep it under wraps? Um, no, we're not allowed to talk about these products yet, but uh, stay tuned. Uh, there's, there's more to come. Uh, we'll we're working on exciting things. Wonderful. I'm excited. I got to hear about them, but I can't say anything. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, thank you, Martin. It's been a pleasure presenting with you again. Thank you, everybody who came. Uh, we look forward thank to seeing you. you. And we'll send you a follow-up email uh, so you can have the same information that you had here. Have a wonderful holiday, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs>